Ah. Well, is your wife satisfied with everything? Oh, yes, we can't thank you too much. Mind you, we may have to shift one or two things around, she tells me. And uh, we're short of one or two little items we'll have to purchase. Oh, really? But you mustn't worry your head over that. Hedda says she'll get what's needed there. I say, why don't we sit down? What? <laughs> thank you, just for a moment. Uh, there's something I want to talk to you about, my dear Tessman. Oh, oh yes, of course. After the feast comes the reckoning. Oh, never mind about the financial side. There's no hurry about that. Though I could wish we'd arrange things a little less palatially. Oh, good heavens, that would never have done at all. Well, think of her, my dear fellow. You know her. I couldn't possibly ask her to live like a petty bourgeois. No, no, that's just the problem. Anyway, it can't be long now before my nomination comes through. Uh, you know, these things often take time. Have you heard any news? What? Uh, uh, nothing definite. Oh, by the way, I have one piece of news for you. What? Your old friend Isla Lothberg is back in town. Yes, I know already. Oh, how do you know that? Yes, she told me. Uh, the lady who went out with Hedda. Ah, what was her name? I didn't quite catch it. Mrs. Elfstead. Ah, the magistrate's wife, yes. Lothberg's been living up near them, hasn't he? I'm delighted to hear he's become a decent human being oh, again. So they say. I hear he's brought out a new book, too. Oh, indeed he has. And I gather it's created rather a stir. Quite an unusual stir. Yes. Oh, that's splendid news. He, he's such a gifted chap, and I, I was afraid he'd gone to the dogs for good. <laughs> Most people thought he had. I, I can't think what he'll do now. I mean, how on earth would he manage to make ends meet? What? Uh, Tesman is always worrying about making ends meet. We were talking about poor Isla Lothbrok, Hedda, yes. Oh, were you? Is he in trouble? I'd heard the Elsteads have made a new man of him. And then this book is just published. Well, let's hope they find something for him. I've just written him a note. Oh, by the way, Hedda, I asked him to come over and see us this evening. But, my dear Tessman, you're coming to me this evening. My bachelor party. You promised me last night when I met you at the boat. Had you forgotten, Tessman? Oh, good heavens, yes. Yes, I'd quite forgotten. In any case, you may be quite certain he won't turn up here. Oh, what makes you think that? My dear Tessman, uh, and you too, Mrs. Tessman, there's something I feel you ought to know. Concerning Arlet? Concerning him and you. Well, my dear Tess, tell us, please. You must be prepared for your nomination not to come through quite as quickly as you hope and expect. Is there anything wrong? What? Well, there's a possibility the appointment may be decided by competition. Competition? I do have had a fancy that. Ah, oh, how interesting. But who else? But you, you don't mean... Exactly. By competition with Isla at Lothberg. No, no, but this is inconceivable. It's absolutely impossible. I think we may find it'll happen all the same. No, no, but Judge Brack, they couldn't be so inconsiderate t towards me. I mean... Much of I'm a married man. It's on the strength of this that Hedda and I got married. We, we found up some pretty hefty debts and we borrowed money from Aunt Chu Chu. I, I mean, good heavens. They practically promised me the appointment. What? Well, well, I'm sure you'll get it. Only you'll have to go through a competition. How exciting, Tesman. It'll be a kind of duel by Joe. Oh, my dear Hedda, how can you take it so lightly? I'm not. I can't wait to see who's going to win. In any case, Mrs. Tessman, it's best you should know how things stand. I mean, before you commit yourself to these little items I hear you're threatening to purchase. <laughs> I can't allow this to alter my plans. Indeed. <laughs> well, that's your business. Goodbye. I'll come and collect you on the way home for my afternoon walk. Oh, yes, uh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm all upside down just now. Goodbye, Judge. See you this afternoon. Thank you. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. My dear Judge, um, you, 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 you'll excuse me. Yes, yes, of course, my dear. Hedda, one really oughtn't to go plunging off on wild adventures. What? Like you're doing. Yes. I mean, there's no denying it, but it was a pretty big adventure to go off and get married and set up house merely on expectation. Perhaps you're right. Well, anyway, we have our home, Hedda. By Jove, yes. The home we dreamed of and set our hearts on. What? You agreed that we should enter society and keep open house. That was the bargain. Yes. Well, good heavens, I, I was looking forward to it all so much, seeing you playing hostess to a select circle. But you know, Well, anyway, for, for the time being, we'd have to make do with each other's company and perhaps have Auntie Juju in now and that. Dear, yeah, this isn't at all what you had in mind. I shan't be able to have a liveried footman for a start. Oh, no, we couldn't possibly afford a footman. And the bay mare, you promised bay me. bay mare? I mustn't even think of that now. Oh, heaven forbid. <laughs> oh, well. I still have one thing left to amuse myself with. Oh, thank goodness for that, Heather. What's that? What? My pistols. George, darling. 
Pistols? General Gobbler's pistols. Well, for heaven's sake, Kevin, don't touch those things. They're, they're dangerous. <laughs> no, pet them. Please. For my sake, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 